Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And well, it's that time again. You know what time that is, don't you? Porky's Corner, pound for pound, helmets of the month for August 2019. Now... We all know, don't we, who gets the votes. It's the same group of about 28, 29 people that seem to be just annoying all the hardcore boxing fans. I don't know why that is, but they just seem to annoy people. Uh, I think it's a mixture of where boxers who are not boxing, they can't be seem to be away from these shows the the turning up and the the whoring themselves out for interviews and they're just whatever happened to boxers just going home and living a normal life and spending time with your family but i don't know they just can't seem to do it can they and and when you're putting yourself out there constantly time after time after time you say things that they come back to bite you in the arse or you can be you can come across as a hypocrite or you can go back on your word for things you've said and you know that that's that's the main reasons why we set up the helmets of the month and uh, you know it's it's that time of month where everybody gets the votes in and we add them all up on twitter and any emails and you know the ones that come on Facebook, although I don't deal with the Facebook, uh, but we add them all up and you know we pick a top 15 out of helmets of the month and there's usually a few surprises in there, there's people that I think should be uh, with top every week, but sometimes they're not, sometimes they don't even get in. And then there's other people that say they want to disappear and they do disappear for about three or four weeks and then they realise that they can't cope. They can't cope without the fame and without being adored and being at shows and doing selfies and being ushered in as VIPs and they just cannot leave it alone. And... Fans pick up on that, don't they? Hardcore fans. Um, some of them just can't leave it. No matter how many millions they've got, they've just got to have that fame fix. And uh, what I've started doing now, I've, I'm starting to ask people, not only do I want you to put your names of where, say for instance, if your name's Fred from Sheffield and you want to pick uh, Tony Macaroni, as a helmet of the month, I want you to tell me why. But as of the September's helmet of the month, I want you to put why you're putting these people, if you can, in your emails. And I want you to give me a list of 15. I don't just want you to say Fred Blog should be helmet of the month. I want you to give me your list of 15 and I'm going to do it on a point scoring system and add them all up. Just like we do with the Prediction League, you know, I want. I want you to tell me why, or at least just give me a, a top 15 instead of just one name. Alright, so, here we go then. Helmet of the month, countdown from number 15 down to number 1. In at number 15, Adam Smith, aka Mr Bean, could have been... Run a bean, should have been, never been, baked bean, green beans, Adam Smith. What can we say about Adam Smith that hasn't already been said? The guy's just a complete weapon. The, the guy is just a complete helmet, isn't it? I don't think he means to be, he just, you just look at him, don't you? He's got a bad comb over. He's got the biggest sideburn in the world as a comb over. And 
the guy's just a weapon, isn't he? And uh, I think one day it'll all come out about him. But till then, we have to give him respect. But he's number 15, Adam Smith, the spin doctor. Classy operator! This is why we love this sport so much. Classy operator. Rough, tough, rugged. Adam Smith, number 15. Pound for pound, Porky's Corner helmet. Yet again, he's there or thereabouts. Yeah, he's there or thereabouts. He's the Ernie Shavers of the helmets. Right, number 14. Well, people say to me, oh, you never put him in there. He's been in a few times, and listen, it don't matter to me who the friends are or whatever. If the votes are in, the votes are in. Pound for pound, number 14. Matthew Macklin. Well, I think Matthew Macklin, I think he's basically in for what he said about Anthony Yard. A lot of people have complained about him. He was very tight this month, actually, especially from 15 down to number 9. But Matthew Macklin, he didn't do himself any favours, uh, saying that Boatsy beats Anthony Yard. Well, after Boatsy's performance yesterday, oh my God, I think Anthony Yard smashes him to bits, punches him upside down. But yet again, we have a Sky employee in Matthew Macklin flying the flag. For a Sky Boxer in Joshua Boatsy who doesn't sell a ticket. Now, Matthew Macklin, nobody's saying he can't fight. He should have been a world champion. He was robbed against Felix Stern. But he does tend to fly the company man flag, doesn't he? For Sky. But I have met Macklin. I met him at the uh, Frotch Yusuf Mack fight and... Seems a pretty nice guy, not very tall, but seems a pretty nice kid. But, like I said, he doesn't help himself, does he? Every time I see him, he's hanging out the back of Adam Smith. So, but, we wish Matthew Macklin well, don't we? But, Matthew Macklin, you are pound for pound. Rank number 14 for the Helmets of the Month for August on Porky's Corner 2019. So, alright. In at number 13, the magic man himself, Paulie Malignaggi. Malignaggi, whatever, however you spell his name. Oh my God, he's always there or thereabouts, isn't he? I don't know why, but he always seems to be just hovering about, isn't he? Why don't he go back to America and stop stealing British fighters' pundit jobs? You are American, Malignaggi. Go home. Conor McGregor is never going to fight you. Stop begging for that fight. And stop trying to pick up a few quid here and there doing BKB. You look stupid. You got your face punched in. You can't punch anyway. You only got a world title because Lou DiBella uh, matched you correctly. But as far as I'm concerned, Paulie Malignaggi. Look, he's a well-deserved helmet. He should be top five every month but you know he's voted at number 13 so Paulie Malignaggi you are a helmet go away go back to Benzinus New York go back there and get some pundit work back there and stop nicking people's jobs over here that job you're doing could go to Jamie Moore or Ryan Rhodes or people like that you know, so jog on back to the States and take your mate Michelle Phelps with you as well. Right, number 12. The one and only matchroom bridegroom, shall we say. Barker, Darren Barker. <laughs> He's married into the matchroom fold, hasn't he? Oh my God. Imagine having to wake up every morning knowing that... You work with your missus at Matchroom. Oh my God! Is that is that how low Darren Barker's had to go to get a meal to get a to get a wage every month for a meal ticket? Oh my God! Jesus, Darren Barker, eh? Who were digging Tunde Ajayi out every week because Eddie Hearn dug him out. If Eddie Hearn were walking around with a turd on his head, Darren Barker'd be walking around with a turd on his head, wouldn't he? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> every time I see him, I just feel sick. 
It's so cringe, isn't it? But Darren Barker, you you had massive um, Darren Barker, right? Darren Barker had massive, 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 massive amount of votes in today, but too late the votes are already in they, they come too late otherwise Darren Barker would have been second and I think what's happened is Darren Barker he just goes above and beyond in these interviews because what amazes me is with these fighters is what amazes me is they all go out of the way to whore themselves but they know that it's wrong what they're saying but they have to do it because they want a meal ticket, don't they? They need paying. They can't get anything going unless it's off at back of Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn's got all these groupies hanging around him for meal tickets. He must be thinking to himself, oh my God, I've got all these. They, 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 all, want, they all want feeding and watering, don't they? It's like, it's like Ali Barba, is it, and his seven wives? Do you know what I mean? But... Uh, They've got all these hanging around and they all want paying, they all want feeding and water and they all want tickets, they all want paying. Do you know what I mean? Why don't they just go set their own business up? Set a gym up and be a man. Or get out thieving for a living. Do you know what I'm saying? Go break law and do something constructive. But no, they'll just sit there and they'll just make begging bowl. It's like Oliver Twist, isn't it? Please, sir, more, more. It's just getting a bit sad now, isn't it? And Barker's become one of those people, hasn't he? And in 11th place here, in at number 11, here's another one. Spencer Oliver. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's he's just cringe, isn't he, Spencer Oliver? Do you know if Adam Smith stood next to Spencer Oliver and he said, right, he said, Crawler will beat Lomachenko... Spencer Oliver would start breaking it down and he could see a way that he could do it. You know, the same Spencer Oliver that had Kel Brook beating uh, Golovkin. You know, th these people have got no shame whatsoever. Spencer Oliver, you are Helmet of the Month, number 11. Jog on, jogger. Right, in. At number 10. The one and only... The Bob Father, Bob Aram. When is this old guy going to get admitted into an old people's home? When is it going to happen? He keeps recycling himself and recycling himself. And how is he getting away with it? How is this man getting away with feeding these people to Lomachenko? How is he doing it? How is he getting away with it? Well, he's been, he's been doing it with Tyson Fury, hasn't he? He's got another one, another stiff for Tyson lined up. How does Bob Adam get away with it? It is unbelievable. He did it with Floyd Mayweather and Oscar De La Hoya for years. He's doing it with Lomachenko. But he's the Bob father, isn't he? He can. When he speaks, other people listen. When Bob Adam's doing an interview... Tony Bellew is hanging out the back of his arsehole. Have you seen that interview he's done with Tony Bellew? Google Bob Arum and Tony Bellew. God, you've got Bob Arum there and he's got Bellew there on his shoulder. Unbelievable. Tony Bellew, eh? The man with four pay-per-views, the one we beat cleverly and hey as world champions. That is it. Jesus, unbelievable. Tony Bellew, the man that never beat a champion, Mr. Vacant Belt. But we've got Bob Arum there, voted number 10. Bob Arum shouldn't be in top 15. I like Bob Arum, but he's Dennis's pal as well. But Bob, I'm sorry, Bob, you're still the Bob father, but guess what? You're in Porky's Corner. Elmer's top 15, Bob, so congratulations. All right. In at number 9. Here's Johnny! Well, what can we say? We've got Johnny Nelson. How could we? How could we have a... How could we have a pound for pound helmets of the month for August without Johnny Nelson? He's always there, isn't he? 
He is always there. You don't know shit about boxing. Johnny Nelson shocks Adam Smith with outburst. Who fires back? Coogan, where are you getting all these clickbaiting uh, clickbaiting titles from? Oh my God. Adam Smith firing back. You're talking about like he's firing back with an Uzi or... They're not, they're not, he's not saying you don't know shit about boxing, he's just, Johnny's been hanging out at our back of Adam 15 years. Oh my god, I'm just looking here at some, I can see why people are voting for Johnny Nelson. Johnny Nelson on cover left yard, AJ calling Lennox a clown, Dillian White, Lomachenko, Campbell and baffled about the Saudi show. Johnny Nelson's baffled. Let me tell you about this right, I know people that have made thousands and thousands from listening to Johnny Nelson's tips in boxing. Johnny couldn't pick a winner if he tried, he's never picked a bogey yet. Let me tell you about Johnny Nelson's tips for, for boxing. If Johnny says fighter A is going to win, pick fighter B and you'll end up a rich fat cat. Oh my god. But what can we do? But it's Johnny Nelson, isn't it? He's just, he's become fixture and fittings, hasn't he, at Sky? Look, nobody, right... Nobody is going to listen to Johnny Nelson, but they're not going to get rid of him. When he comes out with comments like, I think you will break David Price's will and heart. Johnny Nelson to Dave Allen breaks down the Allen fight versus Price. David Allen never won a round, but according to Johnny Nelson, I think you will break David Price's will and heart. Johnny Nelson one month ago on IFL. Oh my God. And then we've got Johnny Nelson here talking about Bellew Usek. Blurred clot. Bellew is technically better than Usek. Oh my god. And then we've got another one here. I was under I was a thousand percent sure he'd win. Oh my god, he's on about Kel Brook. And and uh Golovkin. Look, Johnny just says things that he can't really mean them things because if Johnny Nelson meant all them things and Sky thought he meant them he would never hold a job down ever again on Sky would he? He's just doing it for uh, he's just doing it to be controversial so but it is what it is isn't it? Here we go we've got we've even got Johnny Nelson here I told Eddie Earn to pick up the phone Carl Frotch didn't want it Andre Ward to Johnny Nelson and Johnny piping up in there. How many interviews has he done it? Oh my god. Johnny Nelson's done over 1700 interviews. Oh my god on IFL. Oh my god. Are we trying to say that Johnny Nelson loves being in front of camera? Jeez. Christ. Anyway. Johnny Nelson, you are pound for pound, helmet of the month, number nine. Number eight, pound for pound helmets for August. Gareth A. Davis, you f you rimmer. Gareth A. Davis, wash your mouth out with TCP and then blisterine or listerine, whatever it's called. And then clean your teeth three times with Colgate, you smelly breath. Where's your tongue been, Gareth A. Davis? Oh, my God. The post-fight press conference with Lomachenko and Campbell. You couldn't really see anything, could you? Because all you could see was some legs hanging over a table. From the beginning, you've got Gareth A. Davis hanging out of Lomachenko's mouth. Well, at least it's not hanging out at the back of him, is it? Gareth A. Davis is the biggest rimmer in boxing media. I thought John Rawlins were bad, but Gareth A. Davis, he just takes the biscuit. Number seven, my sparring partner, the one and only Malcolm X, a.k.a. Spencer Fearon. Spencer's been voted number seven, so I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not going to say anything. Spencer, the votes are in, so... What can I do? I tried my best not to get you put in, put in it, Spencer, because I know you don't like being in helmets in the month, Spencer, but we've got a policy here at Porky's Corner. If you voted in, you voted in. Spencer Fearon, you're a helmet. 
I know you've been sending me all the stuff that you do in boxing and it's good. And I didn't know, Spencer, that you do a lot of things. You're handing out Christmas turkeys at Christmas, like Muhammad Ali, Yusuf and Floyd Mayweather. I think it's all good what you do in boxing, but obviously the hardcore fans don't get to know that, Spencer, do they? So I'm going to mention it now. Spencer does a lot in boxing, but as far as I'm concerned, if you think Spencer's an helmet, it's up to you to put your vote in, isn't it? I can't stop that. So Spencer Fearon, you've been voted Helmet of the Month. Number seven on Porky's Corner for August, so that's the way the cookie crumbles, but I'm sure you'll get over it, Spencer. I'm sure you've been called a lot worse. Number six, Andre Ward. That's the Frotch contingent voting him in. Andre Ward, he just can't leave it alone, can he, really? Uh, looking at Andre Ward, he's, he deserves to be an helmet, doesn't he, really? He's never fought in a title fight outside America. He's only fought outside America twice, and they were from, that were where his parents were from in uh, some island or somewhere. So, and he went, he went, it went early in his career. So, Andre Ward, you justified being helmet of the month for number six for August. You are helmet of the month for number six. Jog on. Number five, Eddie Hearn. Now, Eddie Hearn, a lot of votes came in for Eddie this morning, and he would have won it. But they came in too late because today is the first. But Eddie Hearn, you had a lot of votes in before and today as well. Before today and, and during today. Because you don't help yourself, do you, Eddie? You know, we've got the Dillian White B sample situation. We've just had the Charlie Edwards carry on, which I thought was shocking. Shocking, shocking, shocking. Um, just... Just how you carry yourself, Eddie. You don't do yourself any favours, but it is what it is, Eddie. So you're number five pound for pound helmet of the month. In at number four. <laughs> They've done this to cause me problems, right? Dennis Hobson. Dennis Hobson, then you're number four. Pound for pound. For the simple reason that you're not on the ball. And you're putting Tommy Frank in a WBC silver international belt. What's that all about? What's Tommy Frank doing in that and not fighting Sonny Edwards down? I mean, what are we in boxing for? That's why you've been voted in, Dennis. 84 votes. So, what can we do? Dennis Hobson, 84 votes. Pound for pound, number four. Porky's uh, corner, helmet of the month. Which brings me to the top three. Dun, dun, dun. The bronze position goes to the one and only Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew, the disappearing man. The man who has never beat a champion, but yet he criticises Nathan Cleverly for not beating a champion. Although Cleverly has now, hasn't he? But Bellew never beat a champion. Tony Bellew has not beat one world champion. Not beat any champion from area all the way up to world. So how can we not be known? How can he be known as a champion? I don't get that. If he's never beat a champion, how's he a champion? Unbelievable. Unbelievable for our tone. The disappearing man who didn't want to be seen. Hey, the disappearing man who didn't want to be seen from Wednesday has done have a look here from Wednesday has done 44 interviews since Wednesday 44 interviews Tony the disappearing man bell you 44 interviews since Wednesday how's about that then guys and girls Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that averages 11 interviews a day, which is not that many actually because there's 45 to 60 media outlets at pay-per-view shows. Maybe more, but that's what I counted when Frotch used to fight. So, not he hadn't done that many I suppose, but if he's given 44 people his time, I suppose it's a good thing, isn't it? But there's nothing Tony likes better than bigging up Usyk or... Lomachenko or anybody from that era or from that area you know if it's because Tony he, he'll have Usyk down as the greatest ever 
Because only the greatest ever can beat Tony. But when, before he fought Usyk, he said he was terrible, he's crap, and I'll beat him, and I've seen weaknesses. Ha <laughs> Hey? Come on, Tony, tell the truth for once in your life, man. But Tony Bell, you... You are in the bronze position for Helmet of the Month for August 2019. Congratulations, Tom. Now, we get to the silver position. I thought this guy would have won it, but he hadn't, actually. Because we've had loads of votes in the last 72 hours for the first position. But the silver medal for August goes to... You've got it, kids. Tunde Ajayi. I thought he'd have won it, actually. We all knew we were going to get some stick this month, didn't we? But Tunde Ajayi's copped it. And he doesn't help himself, does he, by saying Yarde's loss is like a win. Well, how is it a win? Spencer Fearon said that, I think, didn't he? How is it a win? How is a loss where you you shared round eight, but, but yeah, you... You got knocked out in 11th, but it's classed as a win. I don't get that. I don't get where he's coming from. We were told he had better skills than Andre Ward. We were told he was best thing since sliced bread. Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. But yet we don't know what level Anthony Yard's at, do we? Because he's never beat anybody British level. He's only beat guys who are really area level and guys who were probably English level and on the slide. So he could he could he could say said Glocker, or however you pronounce it. He's probably stroke English stroke British level, but he were on the slide one is so. The jury's out on Anthony Yard, but I wish Tunde Ajayi all the best. If you complain and say anything, you're classed as a hater. But Tunde Ajayi has been winding people off the clock for the last three or four year with Anthony Yard. They've got endorsement deals coming out their ear holes and they've earned good money, but yet his yard's not achieved anything, has he? He's not even won a British title yet. He's not even won an English title. He's won an area title, that's it. Not won an English, a British, a Commonwealth. Nope. Nor a European. But yet we're told he's better than Andre Ward, his skill set is. He's utter knackers. And I don't like people talking knackers around me. But. Sunday, Ajayi, I'm sorry mate, but your pound for pound helmet, number two, ranked for August 2019, on Porky's Corner. Which brings me to, the gold medal position for August, Porky's Corner, pound for pound helmets of the month, the one and only, David Allen, oh my god, David Allen walking about in them glasses. David Allen is complaining that people like me are saying that his health's bad. Well, David Allen put a tweet out after the price loss saying he'd had bad health for 18 months. Your tweet, David. Not my tweet, your tweet. Bad health, 18 months, bad eyesight, and you're having to wear glasses to see correctly. Am I right? You know I'm fucking right. Now... I am exactly right, but if you say anything, you're classed as a hater. Oh, he's a hater. He's jealous. He's a hater. I'm 50 year old next year. You know what to be jealous about? How can I be a hater? I'm just reporting on what's being said. David Allen put a tweet out saying that he's been in bad health. Now he's saying he's in great health because there's a date for him in August. Uh, sorry, October 19th, which is my birthday. All of a sudden, David Allen, stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet, is seen like a hawk. He's got 20-20 vision. So, I want to know what eye drops David Allen's doing and what he's took to get rid of these bad headaches. But, slurring his words constantly on interviews. So, but he's not my problem, David Allen. I wish him all the best. I'm just reporting on what's been said. I'm trying not to be biased for people I know, but David Allen... He's a helmet of the month. The votes are in. He's the first position helmet of the month for August 2019. Going on about Saudi Arabia. Well, he's not got a date in Saudi Arabia on the Joshua Ruiz rematch card, has he? 
Freddie Cunningham didn't want him on for the simple reason he said Joshua should retire and move to an island. Well, now David's turned it into he don't want to fight in Saudi, does he? David Allen don't want to fight in Saudi because of what they do to people over there because they do horrible things to people, don't they? But I can assure you, if David Allen gets offered to fight in Saudi, he'll be gone. So remember what you said, Dave. Be responsible for what you said. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. The votes are in. And that's it. David Allen's won it. So, alright. So, peace out.